Hello everyone and welcome back to Disco Elysium. This is episode 19. Last time we had some revelations take place in the church as we found the source of the silence and it did not sound that silent at all actually but we, we managed to really kind of have some profound thoughts about what was going on with not just the church but all around us and what's actually going on in this place and it was incredible to also run around after that exploring more taking in more of the the world and we've gone to sleep and we've woken up and it's a brand new day day five so we're going to leave we'll uh reunite with kim who should be waiting for us outside and we're going to ignore the communism bubble because tonight on day five we'll actually go to that communism meeting and we'll remember to go there <laughs> because we unfortunately got sidetracked so many things to do so many hours in a day you know there's only so many things you can do uh there he is good morning as he is writing in his floating book and puts it away in his jacket he's he's such a magical guy kim you know, he's just not afraid to show people that he can use the force. You know? When he's, he just doesn't even need to write with his hands. He's a magical man, this one. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <clears throat> let's let's lock it in for the for the beginning of the game, shall we? Brand new day, day five. We have many tasks to get to, and I might uh, actually try and run through them uh, bottom to top. We'll actually go through what we can of the older ones first. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go across the water lock. I'm going to see if we can buy some stuff from the pawn shop that is in relation to music, to sing karaoke, and then we may also be able to find music for Egghead as a result. Uh, we're going to run on uh, the armor uh, questions. We can potentially find someone else to ask about the tattoo's possible meaning uh, I might check in with Joyce again because it's been some time and I remember us having the tattoo conversation about who we could ask so I might get another hint um, once I get and then this is I guess back to the some of the main stuff going on is I need to do the signatures for Everart we're just gonna get the fake signatures we're just gonna do the fake signatures uh, with our drunk friends uh, down the way here so we can hand that back to him um, and then you know finding our gun seems to be tied to that so we'll make sure that we can do that <clears throat> and then the thursday tasks we'll, we'll get there we'll get to the thursday tasks when we can so while we're here um while we're here and before we cross over i'm going to get these uh these jolly fellows to uh sign the oh they're not here they write that's that's right they're usually here they're not they're not always there then i will come back later uh we'll come back later for those i was like wait where are they <laughs> they're gone um obviously because i haven't seen them move from there yet i didn't know if they would just always be there or not um so i i guess not they're not there at 7 30 in the morning they do still have homes to get to i suppose good for them it's a new day. Do I check a trap on my way over? A trap. They seem weak and unhealthy. A few lie on their backs with their legs twitching. Poor things. Uh, I feel like that's kind of like the fate of the... Uh, I feel like that's kind of the fate of the locusts now. Just to like kind of stay there and unfortunately deal with that uh, no phasmid situation. Let's go into the let's go into the pawn shop because it's on the way back for everything else. Now, the music stuff is up here. The boomboxes wait on the shelves, and your boombox, that gold and amber Harmon Walshi, stares at you longingly with its tape reel eyes. Now it allows us to play tapes if we equip it, so that's cool. What I really want to know is, could this device come handy in my police work? If police work means playing tapes, sure. You can use it for that. Or any other time you'd need to play a tape. That's very... that's that's very good. Thank you. Very knowledgeable. I want to buy that boombox. And here you are. Quality sound reproduction on the go. 
It'll play anything, wherever. Turn any tape into a conversation of sounds and shapes. I wonder if uh, my one of my instant thoughts, because we're buying, we're buying it now, um, is I assume that we may need it for the karaoke thing if we play the song on the tape. Uh, but I'm wondering if it would have had any impact or changes to our interactions with um, the nightclub crew, the the musical, the musical tent chaps. You know, I wonder if um, it would have had something to do with that. All the old boomboxes are there, blinking and waiting to whirl. All but one, yours. Nice. This is the light. Martinez. Seven hundred real. Among assorted floor and table lamp. You see rows of toy soldiers guarding the rest of the trinkets. Oh, nice. Laid on the table. Some on horseback, others in rags, others yet in bright blue uniforms. All are stern and unyielding in their duty. I forgot that there was a check here, and it's 83. I'm wearing my interfacing gloves, so that works out. Dig up a truly cool figurine in the box under the table. Everything you pick out seems faded, chipped, and sad somehow. Most of them are just broken toys. There's nothing like starting an episode off by failing an 83% check. There's just nothing quite like it. Nothing quite like it at all. <laughs> Top of the morning to you. How may I be of service? Early bird gets the worm, huh? Perhaps. I just like being awake for the transition between night and morning. Bearing witness to the first hints of light on the horizon. <laughs> the boombox I bought should play this tape, right? Of course. It's in working order still, isn't it? Just pick your tape and set it spinning. It all starts with the tape. Do you have any recordings of the Koldo Mama Dakwa? The Koldo Mama Dakwa? Sorry, I would never have guessed that you were that interested in ultrasonic sounds. Or birds, for that matter. <laughs> I've been thinking of quitting the RCM and becoming a cryptozoologist. I've been, into, I've, I've been really into all kinds of art lately. Experimental things, you know? What an interesting development. Well, it's been a long while since I've gone hunting for the Koldi Mamadakwa. Once knew a group of young musicians who decided they didn't want to play <coughs> music anymore and started looking for all kinds of interesting sounds instead. That sounds so cool. Cool or not, one of them was obsessed with recording the Koldi Mamadakwa. And he was one of those passionate people who know a lot about all kinds of strange things. So he got the rest of us to join in his search. And did you ever find it? We thought we did. We got together all these recordings of unusual sound patterns. Compared them. <laughs> Cut them up and combined them into the Symphonia called Imamadakwa. I wonder if I can give that to Egghead. Can I listen to it? Unfortunately, I don't have any recordings from my old life. None at all. But I do have a tape with some ultrasonic sounds that might be what you're looking for. Nice. There you go. I can give that to Egghead. Do we really have time for this? Yes. Even though it's related to something else, it's absolutely necessary for my research. This recording comes from down the coast. Wasn't looking to record anything specific. Just left a recording device there one morning. Keep in mind... I have to slow this one down enough to make sounds well over 200 kilohertz audible to the human ear. It will be... strange. He switches on the tape player. The speakers begin to emit a low hum. As the hum grows louder, modulating but always unnaturally uncomfortably low, like it's coming not from the speakers, but also from inside your chest, breathing is becoming difficult. This is weirdly timed because when we were in the church and we started hearing the sound of the silence, so the sound in the swallow, H Harry made the observation that it's the sound came from inside of him first. He said it like it started inside. 
So he was just recording something off the off the coast. It's coming not from the speakers, but also from inside your chest. That's an illusion. Your breathing is just as it was and will remain that way unless you start panicking. Okay, Endurance, don't shatter me trying to have a big brain moment. There's a growing sense of dread. The sound is coming from inside you, but also surrounding you. It feels as though someone is standing just outside of your range of vision and watching you, doing this to you. Ah! Inland Empire just broke the fourth wall. I was waiting for like a moment like that when, especially with something like Inland Empire being like, I was waiting for some self-aware video game moment. Oh my God. Inland Empire just totally just called us out. He nods to you, reassuring me. Just as more diverse, higher-pitched sounds, some random, some appearing to form patterns, hit your eardrums. Seabirds, most likely. Gulls and such. I was getting so excited that I thought that this was going to have a pale connection just because of the, the sound originating from within him that I'm now disappointed. And I feel like that's this game. <laughs> this game is like... Insulindian phasmids and then disappointment and then like what is this so that you know the only t thing but we have had a breakthrough with the sound in the church but a lot of it is like you follow this thing and then you're just like oh it was nothing seagulls and skewers but shh a new high-pitched shivering sound a low range of sounds is easier to handle with a focal point but still troubling you are mesmerized by the sounds, but also feel nausea welling up as the motif continues, then begins to recede, dissolving in what must be the sound of water lapping at the bank. You know, now that I've listened to it on these new speakers, it's not the cold de Mamadakwa. Wrong patterns, wrong photons. Probably some insect trying to sing higher than its predators can hear. Still, fascinating, aren't they? Early morning sounds. I'm going to say that there wasn't the cold, do, uh, do, um, cold do mama dark word. God, it's so hard to say. Um, I'm going to say it's not that. He actually recorded the insulindian phasmid. It's proof. All right. <clears throat> There's an electrochemistry check. Uh, I can up my odds in this. Um, so let me let me put my clues on. This is the real to real boombox of everyone's youth. A little banged up, a little chipped, and honestly, not that loud either. It looks cool though. Excels at being carried on the shoulder, allowing you to play audio tape items and blast music into the face of unsuspecting strangers. Nice. Okay, close. Um, electrochemistry, right? Electrochemistry. Ah, these are both electrochemistry pants. Okay, got to have those electrical pants, got to have the silk robe on, um, I feel like we got something else that's, yes, the fingerless gloves have returned, okay, there you go. Top of the morning to you, nice. how may I be of service? Okay, he definitely is high. Whatever it is, you've probably done it, and many other things besides. But you can't cut through the jumble of sensations to get to the answer. That's two 83% check fails in a row at the beginning of the episode. We are off to a strong start today. Looking at his weirs, talking to him, that might give you more clues. A guarded man like him wouldn't tell you if you asked out loud. I love how it's like, logic, look around. I'm like, I have. We've we've gone through it all, too. Oh, man. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, man. Why did they do that to me? Mm. I don't want to level up my electrochemistry so much, dude. I don't want to. God damn it. All right. I'm going to come. We'll, we'll come back to that another day. We'll come back to that one. I'm going to figure out what's up with him, but we have to do it on our own terms. I will, I will not be. I will not be forced. 
<laughs> I will not be forced. God damn it, that's that's ridiculous. That is so ridiculous. Two eighty-three percent fails. All right, we bought the boombox. I actually thought we might have gotten a free recording from the pawn shop owner there for Egghead, but that didn't happen. Instead, we just got to listen to it, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, let's use the Kanima to call Alice. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? All right, because we've also got reporting a dead body on the Martinez boardwalk and... Uh, we need to follow something up with the Jamrock Public Library, so we've got multiple things that we can do here as well. Hi! <laughs> uh, and then, I just remembered because we're on this side again, I need to talk to Renee and stuff as well. There's so much that we got to do. Alright, let's find out about the boots. The armor is the most important thing first. Still no word, I'm afraid, sir. Oh. I know it must be frustrating. Was there anything else you wanted to ask? It's a whole new, it's a whole new day. Crazy. Okay. Uh, connect me to Jamrock Public Library, please. I'm afraid they're closed. It oh. says here that the library is open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. <clears throat> Early bird does not get the worm today, does it? We should try again during business hours. We will indeed. Anything else, detective? I need to report a dead body on the Martinez boardwalk. One moment. Can you please describe the body? Age, sex, cause of death? Uh, an unidentified middle-aged man. Height, 170 to 175 centimeters. Dark hair, medium build. Looks like he slipped, fell through a hole in the boardwalk and hit his head against the metal bench. We suspect he might have been inebriated when he fell. There were bottles all around him and traces of vomit on his shirt. Any signs of violence? <laughs> there might be a sequence killer on the loose. No, it seems like it was an accident. No field autopsy necessary. What about his belongings? Did you examine his clothes? He was wearing boots, trousers, and an old leather jacket with a bright blue lining. I found a library card from his pockets. Any information on the library card? Uh, it's from Central Jamrock Public Library. It belongs to someone named Billy Mejong. Good. You have a lead. Do you and Lieutenant Kitsuragi want to take the case, or should I assign it to someone else? Uh, we're taking the case. I have assigned the case to Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi. Please follow up on this library lead to identify the man. We'll send someone to take the body to the morgue. Did she say Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi in, in French or in... Because it did not sound f like... The way that she said that just then, just like... It sounded like absolute... Only that specific part of the, the sentence said... Like, sounded like gibberish to me. I was like, I just couldn't even... I just went, oh, my brain glitched. I, did you say it or did you not? <laughs> That's all for now. Thank you for reporting. Is there anything else I can do for you? I was like reading while listening and being like, huh? What? 57th, over and out. Okay. In the cabin, you see... We'll come back here for the library then, so we got to do that in uh, in a couple of hours. There you go. Okay. Um, hmm. There's checking in with Joyce. Um, there's... Yep, yeah, that's that happened. We've got to call to the Jolly Mask about the armor. We can do that as well. I'm assuming the Hardy Boys are going to be in the Whirling right now as well. And then we've got to speak to Class J again. Oh, they're not. Oh, no, they are. <laughs> For some reason, I was like, oh, they're not there. Um, they're back. I, need, I want to follow up with them as well because I feel like we had a little bit more of a breakthrough with our our mind yesterday as well. So we'll, we'll see. Damn, that felt good. Your heart's pounding nicely. You should tell people to fuck off more often. Who did I tell to fuck off that this thought is coming up? Did it, was it the lorry driver? Interesting. Maybe this is a thought that I, I missed, but it can still pop up, even though I don't... Was it? It must have been the lorry driver, because it's like right next to him. Kim, I think I should tell people to fuck off more often. It felt really good. Not as a general rule, but that one was justified. <clears throat> Better to get the lay of the land before telling people to fuck off. <laughs> fuck yeah, motherfuckers. That's the spirit. We don't heal our health very often. We heal our 
mor morale a lot. Never forget. The whole world's a wooden house, and you're a goddamn flamethrower. Nice. Maybe the thought only pops up now because we just have more points in Half-Life. Half-Life? <laughs> Half-Light than we did before. But who knows? Right. Let's talk to our jolly mess upstairs. Hold on, Wandering Man. How can I help you? Kuno told me you were supposed to know about the armor. <laughs> the little boy had the good on his promise. His promise? To get me into trouble. To <laughs> sit the pigs on me. Pardon the choice of words. Not mine. Amazing. What happened? I was asked to look into that armor situation. Official union probe, you know. Track it down, see who took it. Did you? At first I thought, why not? Maybe the pieces can feed the strike. Buy us a few more days under the sun, you know. So I went to this boy. He said he'd make me his prison bitch. He's got eyes everywhere, and the cops in his pocket, and he's the king of Jamrock. Serves me right for doing menial footwork. I dropped that probe right then and there, and it still got me into trouble. One bad move is all it takes. So Kun Kuno used us to what scare you, and the probe into the armor. What did you learn? I learned that people don't want to talk to a drunk union man about some armor. What else? Not much. Technical stuff, mostly. That was the interesting part. What sort of technical stuff? I did some research into this armadura. Let's say I have friends at the library. I didn't get into the material science, just how it comes off. Hmm. The library comes up again. How does it come off? In parts. Four in total. The helmet was the first to go. The kid says he tore it off and kicked it into the sea. Mm -hmm. I believe him. The boots were still on the guy last I saw. Too hard to remove. So Kuno's told the same story to us and to Manana about the the helmet. So he has kicked it off into the sea. So we're just missing gauntlets or like arm pieces. We've, we know where the chest is. We have it now. And the boots are, we're on the victim still. So as I count, there are two parts missing. The gauntlets and the cuirass. This is where I left off. Too much hassle. More like a job for some militia. Four pieces of armor up for grabs then, but I already sent the boots away. I guess you won't be collecting them all then. That's less work for you, at least. Hold up, four pieces. Helmet, cuirass, gauntlets, boots. What about the leggings? Oh, they're just gone. <clears throat> they don't exist anymore, if they ever did at all. Forget about them. I did. Oh. Actually, I may have better things to do, too. I agree, officer. Let's focus on the hanging, and later some junior officers can take care of the rest. Nice. From what I learned, it was a very heavy, boring set of armor. I want to check out more of the... There's more options, so I'm going to go back into it again. How does it? In parts. So, as I count, there are two parts missing. And then I can the go... Gauntlet. I've already got some armor. I'm pretty happy without struggling to find more. So you have. No wonder you're a detective. Nice. So, uh, it's a secret task. Find one armor piece. So, Kuno used us to what? Scare you? It's a minor nuisance. It's all good. Thank you for the cooperation, sir. No problem. If you see that kid, thank him from Call Me Manana. Thank him for showing me the way. <laughs> he is sincerely grateful. He is not tracking down pieces of armor right now. Good talking to you. Uh, so the update is Kuno lied to you. Return and confront him. Okay. So we've got more Kuno, which is always great. Don't we just love more Kuno? However that's going to go down. <laughs> Let's go talk to Kuno and be like, hey man... What gives? And then he'll be like, Kuno doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. But Kuno also knows exactly what the fuck he's talking about, if you know what I'm saying. Kuno's Kuno? Fuck does Kuno care? <laughs> oh man. I talked to Manyana about the armor. So? He said, now you're the king of the entire Jamrock? Uh, North Jamrock? Kuno meant everything north of 881. The rooster fucked Kuno's words up. Kuno doesn't do south, doesn't fuck with the madre. Kuno sent your fat ass running around like jello! Look, pig, Kuno sent you to rough some people up. Kuno played you, that happened. Now you and Kuno should move on. <laughs> I remember this, Kuno. You got fucked. You got fucked, pig. 
fucked, bad. Of course you're going to remember this. Now get the fuck out of here, grief and lacuno. After this shit, you better have something real interesting to say if you want to stay in Kuno's face. Yeah, real interesting. Kuno doesn't fucking care. <laughs> Aren't they the jolliest bunch? They really are just the jolliest bunch. The trash container stands in the spring snow. The smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. I'm curious to check this out. Um... Because I wonder if something that I've only just realized until now, I'm like, we've been here for multiple days and part of me is like, well, I mean, obviously this trash container is still going to get used. I'm actually wondering if there would be potentially anything new that would come up here. I don't know if it would be interesting, but checking the bin every day isn't exactly what I want to do. <laughs> you see, you've done this before. No, a box full of... I'm just checking it. everything. Nice to see here. There's nothing more. Okay. The container sounds a muffled gong. Never mind. Ding, 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 ding. All right, we can go. <clears throat> Kuno's gonna have a fucking heart attack. All right, well that's fine. Uh, task complete about uh, confronting Kuno, so that's great. Uh, I have to wait till the drunken dudes come back for the signatures, because what is it? It's in interact, isn't it? This guy. You take the legal documents out of the envelope. A 12 to 14. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Oh, hang on. Tape. Smallest church in St. Sands. Oh, wait a minute. The tape you found from a shack in the coast. Oh, wait. Hang on. Oh, I forgot that I had a tape this whole time. Oh, my God. I'm so stupid. I Every time that... Oh, that makes so much more sense. Oh, I just totally blanked on that. That's so silly. And I never, I just didn't even acknowledge it in here. Because we don't really come into the interact menu, like, too much. We have a tape. Okay. Every time a tape came up in conversation, I um, didn't pay any attention to it. And I went, oh, that's weird, because the tape that we have is the empty cassette case. <laughs> We actually have one. God damn it. Okay, so we can play this in the boombox. We can also give this to Egg, uh, Egghead. Um, hmm. It's supposed to contain the instrumental version. The porter reel is just what you needed. The reels attached to the apparatus with a satisfying click. The tape is routed behind the magnetic reader. Nice. Okay, we can actually press play on the tape now. You press the large button marked Commencer and the tape starts spinning. There's a small delay before the song starts playing. Oh, this might be my sad karaoke song. I might already have it then. I'm, I'm sorry that I forgot about the tape for so long, but there you go. <laughs> um, maybe tonight, maybe day five, we'll stay in the whirling again. Uh, we'll play karaoke um, in the afternoon or in the evening. We'll stay in the whirling again. That'll give me a chance to check some stuff in my... Have another sleep in the apartment see what happens if i can be bothered spending the real to do so we'll see um let's press our ear against the speaker it sounds like someone's moving in the room getting comfortable then the organ starts playing a simple melancholic tune echoing in the hallway a lone singing voice joins in this makes so much sense that there's an instrumental version on the other side so we like learn the song uh the singing on one side and then we can do karaoke for the instrumental version. It was right in front of me the whole time. Telling you about the tiniest church in Sessongs, surrounded by even tinier yard. You almost feel the seaside mist on your skin. It's mega sad. Within seconds you know this is the one. The real shit you've been looking for. The one you trashed your room to. This one tells it like it is. This is your tune. Damn. A click, then silence for a bit. Then the tape stops spinning. Scratch that, I'm already crying and I look dumb and old. Can I sing this for karaoke? I think I could sing this. Of course you could sing this. You could take sad to a whole new level with this. And you already know the lyrics since you've listened to it like a million times. Hmm. Yep, they're all here. All three verses. And the B-side of the tape <coughs> contains the instrumental version 
It's like the world itself is telling you to do it. Only one obstacle stands on your way. What? God. You have to convince God to let you sing karaoke in the whirling. After you've won him over, you can express yourself. Let the pain out. Make everyone understand. The lieutenant watches you pack up the boombox. He doesn't say anything. Damn, we had, okay, we've had the tape this whole time. So silly. Egghead's not gonna want that. Egghead's not gonna want the sad one. We're gonna have to find maybe another tape. But who knows? There's a decent amount of people in here right now. I wonder if I could sing karaoke during the day. Do we want some daytime karaoke to take place? Who knows? <coughs> hey, was there something you needed? Well, well. Bringing him that new bird sure made a difference in his attitude. It'd be nice if that, uh, that bird gave me a free night in the whirling. <laughs> Gart, I need to sing karaoke now. No, you don't. It's not happening. He tries not to look at you. It's dangerous to acknowledge the karaoke man. Hmm. <clears throat> Why do you even have the PA system if no one's going to use it? It's for the... It's for no one. It's a prop. I'm not letting anyone use it after the great karaoke catastrophe of 44. What happened in 44? A lot of people got killed because some arsehole wanted to sing karaoke. It's not a prop, it's for your clients. I know it's used. Okay, yes, it's for some clients. I'm a real client, I've paid my bills, and I have the right to use the karaoke machine. Ha! Well, we don't have any tapes. They all got stolen. It's alright, I have my own song with me. The man in the vest and the violet shirt stares at the tape you've just given him. He begins to frown. Hard. Fine, fine. Climb on that stage and do your thing. Just get out of my hair. I'll plug it in for you. Damn this karaoke machine. Oh yeah. Time to do the damage. Oh no, it's happening. Okay. We can do the karaoke now, during the day, in front of everyone. Wonder how the Hardy Boys are gonna wonder what the Hardy Boys are gonna think about this one. <laughs> okay. This one's gonna be interesting. Um should I take an opportunity to prepare myself for this because uh, what, what would I need? I would need some drama, right? I would definitely need some drama. Oh, and wearing my jackets as well? That's a half-light one. This one's more drama, but this is Kim's jacket, except he won't wear it. Um, electrochemistry could be a good idea for my pants. Drama and electrochemistry. Mm-mm. This is my this is my good outfit. That's certainly my best outfit. Um. Hmm. Encyclopedia. Not as much perception. Interfacing instead of half light. Ooh, I don't know how half light is gonna come through. Um you got to think about these things. How how are these things going to affect the outcome? Um, oh yes, maybe I should <laughs> go up on stage and do some do some drugs first. All right, our reaction speed, now perception is minus, our authority is minus. We got pluses. <clears throat> we look absolutely fantastic for the stage. I'm scared. Again. I can't believe this shit. Okay. Yes? What is it? I was wondering if there was going to be more there. Why are they here? Okay. The stage is all set up for your performance. Feels silent. You can hear the pellets creak under your feet. You feel a little dizzy. A little unsteady suddenly. So, uh, are you ready for your thing now? Let me know when I should turn on the karaoke carousel. I... He said karaoke carousel. Um... It's a formidable... It is drama. 
it is drama and dress code insane silk dragon we got a plus one for the thing that we're wearing so it's a drama check and it's a red check too i'm ready got hit play just straight up look kim i'm gonna sing karaoke there's definitely gonna be a minus test it is also gonna be a minus i feel like they're just gonna be minuses so give me a sec because we got to check here first this feels right you belong here okay it's to so it's all drama. We've never even had to put a point in drama, and it's six. We've had some unlucky rolls today. I'm not. I'm not feeling good about our chances. I've my confidence has been straight rocked. <laughs> like straight up. I can smoke beforehand though, because that increases my intellect points, which gives me even more drama. We're up on stage, baby. We're up on stage. It's, uh, it's showbiz. Oh, it's actually letting me click on the icon in windowed mode. Thank God. I don't have to change it to full screen all of a sudden. I think I can just click on the number, actually. There you go. I like how that works out. All right. Damage my health, baby. Our drama's at seven. I'm feeling, I'm feeling particularly spicy today. Let's go. The stage is all set up for your performance. You feel a little dizzy. So, uh, are you ready for your thing now? Eighty. So this is. <laughs> turn on the karaoke carousel. This is our third. This is our third. Eighty-three percent check. Of this episode. Third time's the charm, baby. The air is thick with anticipation. <clears throat> there it is. The tape clicks into the carousel, and then the music starts. I would often go there To the tiny church there The smallest church in San San Though it once was larger How the real may rest there Down through the mist there Toward the Seven Sisters Toward those pale cliffs there I would often stay there In their tiny yard there I have been so glad here Looking forward to the past here But now You are all alone None of this matters no, none of this matters at all. Damn, dude. It makes so much sense that Harry's actual voice is the ancient reptilian brain because not everyone has this people some people you know when they have it's, it's actually really interesting to know that some people don't have this and i've learned that but like uh there are many people that have like an internal voice you know if you if you are speaking or like th saying thoughts in your head like what voice do you hear usually it's like your own voice and it makes so much sense that it carries ancient reptilian brain when it talks to him when he's sleeping it's his brain is like talking to himself in his voice um and just in t it, it doesn't even click until the singing takes place and it's just like holy fuck like that's harry's actual voice which is so crazy um 
God, this game is so it's, it's such such a melancholy experience, you know. Like, <laughs> it's 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 wild. Like the way that we're dressed, just having a singing a miserable sad song at eight a.m. <laughs> at eight a.m. Oh my God! I would often go there to the tiny church there, the smallest church in Saint Saints, though it was once was larger. How the rill may rest there, down through the mist there, toward the seven sisters, towards those pale cliffs there. I would often stay there, in the tiny yard there. I have been so glad here, looking forward to the past here. But now you are alone. None of this matters at all. A rather lonely applause. He tells you with an improving nod. A, ron a rather lonely applause echoes through the mostly empty cafeteria. It's Gart. Yes, not bad at all. The lieutenant joins in. You feel your hands shake as awareness of your body returns to you. <laughs> Thank you, ancient reptilian brain. Thank you. I don't need big crowds. I just need my friends. Life is a fucking joke. And thanks for bearing with me. I'm going to get back to work now. Thank you, ancient reptilian brain. No reply. There is silence now in the deep where the voice came from. It has receded into you to return only in dreams and nightmares. While I so agree that life is a fucking joke, let's go for the first one. Thank you. I don't need big crowds. I just need my friends. Okay, yes. I'm going to <laughs> unplug the microphone so you can get off the stage now. <sighs> we did it. Okay. I was not expecting to actually do my Monday task, my last Monday task today, but we did it. Uh, we did our we did our uh, Monday task. We've sung karaoke. Does anyone have anything to say about that? Ah, smallest church in Saint-Saëns, right? The church is my past. The church is my life. The church is actually my love. Things are really bad with it. I fucking rocked that shit. Told you I'd rock that shit. I fucking rocked that shit. It was all right. Subdued. I might start letting people up there again. Now, what can I do for you? Okay, goodbye. Actually, hang on. Hey, another thing. Great. I love those. Ah, oh, I get to tell him about this stuff. Class in room three next to the phone line. And then I want... Yeah, I feel like maybe it probably is a good idea to talk about that. Maybe. God, what if I told you I got into the back room behind the blue steel door? Oh, Okay, well, I did hear you make noise back there, so good for you. He's really, really holding himself back here. Aren't you going to ask me what's back there? Okay, what is back there? Oh my god. It's like I want to tell him, but also... Nothing. The black gaping more at the end of time. Skeletons. A mausoleum of the dead. Yes, haha. Ha. What's actually behind there? Nothing. The black gaping more at the end of time. There is no gaping more. If you don't want to tell me, you don't have to. That's okay. But please do still tell me. <laughs> pinball machines. It's a pinball workshop. Ha! I knew it. I've always wondered where those machines by the door came from. And they told me there was some kind of pinball thing here too. I knew it. Were there any back there? In working order, I mean. Why? Do you want to play? Because I might be up for a game. No, I was just wondering if you found pinball machines there. <laughs> he was wondering about something business related. About how much money he could make of one. I feel a capitalist plot coming up. If you're thinking of selling those pinball machines, I want a fat cut. C-suite shit. I'm a disruptor. <laughs> Thinking of turning this place into a pinball arcade? No, but we could diversify the entertainment options, seeing as you've opened the door back there. Well, the machine we have in the corner now is broken. It wouldn't hurt to get a little life in here, other than the hellish karaoke machine. That one's always causing trouble. Yeah, those numbers he's adding up must be making good sense to him right now. <laughs> oh? He's really... Okay. Ha! 
I knew it. Well, no, I... He was wondering... Those machines are whirling property. But if it makes you feel any better, I'm not planning to sell them. Okay. <laughs> it wouldn't hurt to get a little life in here, other than the hellish karaoke machine. That one's always causing trouble. Yeah, those numbers he's adding up must be making good sense to him right now. Okay. Um, and now we've got Class J in room three. She nicks the phone line. Why? No, fuck it. I don't want to know. I don't want to know why these degenerates do what they do. I thought we had one good guest in the building. <laughs> we, have, we have Lena. Lena is a good customer. Yeah, well, she's not a guest, is she? Anyway, I'll forward that woman her bill and be done with it. Now, was there anything else? Hmm. I don't know. I didn't like that. I didn't like that resolution, actually. I was wondering if it would lead to something interesting and it did not at all and now I'm just like uh that was kind of pointless to even bring up because it was going to get fixed anyway but there you go never mind <laughs> yes okay goodbye we did our we did our karaoke though yes Kim doesn't have anything to say about our karaoke that we've just done I wonder if anyone else does yes what oh, is it there we go did you hear that? Did you hear me sing? Did you like it? That... that was pretty good, Harry. Wasn't it, Jean? Jean. Ha, huh, that was... Yeah, that was absolute shit, if you want my opinion. Drunken shit. Haven't wanted anything to end this badly since I had cluster headaches. Okay. Horrible. Truly horrible. Okay. I beg of you, don't ever subject anyone to this torture again. I mean, seriously, you need to... Okay, man. Jean. It's not right. Don't make it worse. And, and I, I really liked it. She actually did. Nice. This fucking guy. Again? I can't believe... Get out of here, Jean. I see you found yourself a little something from my wardrobe. Oh! Not bad. Not bad <laughs> at all. What brings you here? Oh, uh, we're wearing this thing and he's like, oh, nice. About this robe I'm wearing. Oh, wow, okay. You can keep it. I don't mind. I can appreciate beauty when I see it. Thanks. It's like carrying a piece of you with me at all times. Is it now? <laughs> well, enjoy it. Got to get that composure check up at some point as well so we can uh, Bye -bye, find out what's going on with him. I've got nothing to say to you. Why are you wasting your time? Okay. It's you again. What is it? This is probably not the best attire to be confronting Titus with because we need to talk about some stuff. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to know if you heard my music. All right, hold on a second. I gotta change my clothes. <laughs> I gotta get back into another. I gotta get back into my authoritative stance. Um, so let's put on our fuck the world jacket. Uh, I need my. Um, do physical instrument tank top because why not where are my my gloves invisible no I oh know I'm wearing the ones that I want the half-light gloves that's fine um, give me back my composure pants perception half-light there you go it's exactly how I want to look All right, let's go again are you sure you don't want to wear this jacket with me? Yes. What about me? just want to see if I can get him to do something. What do you mean? I have no idea. The lieutenant's conceptualization skills must be rather rudimentary. This is literally what I was just talking about, by the way. <laughs> but this isn't an old school case. You're one of those old school detectives. So what? That makes you the new school? God spare us. For real detective work, nothing beats a good notebook by your side. The lieutenant produces his small blue notebook and idly thumbs through a few pages. That's where his conversations with himself take place. We all have our different mediums. His is written. No. 
The lieutenant nods. Okay. Good. Let's change the... What do you want to know? I'm just trying to... No. The lieutenant adjusts. Good. I'm just wondering if there's any way to be like, Kim, the jacket. Hmm, okay. It's you again. What is it? Well, now I'm wearing my Fuck the World jacket. I'm ready for this conversation. All right. Class says says she wasn't assaulted. Fuck! I knew that fucking whore couldn't be trusted. For the record, Titus Hardy did not explicitly specify the victim as a whore, nor did he say anything about trusting her. <laughs> okay, Elizabeth, that that that's fine. Yeah, we'll just forget that Titus said anything. Oh, shut up and stay out of this, Liz. He raped her. He was out of his fucking mind. You have no idea. Okay, mate. She's just in denial, asshole. You don't understand the traumatic experience. She's shutting down, and she doesn't fucking trust you. Yeah, she's crazy, you know. A crazy bitch. You know the type. She's fucked up. This is a diversion. Stay on track. Cut the bullshit. She told me the truth. Lawman, I'm at the end of my goddamn rope with you. I fucking told you not to push her. Didn't push her at all, mate. His hands become fists. You want to throw down, bud? I'm ready. I got my fuck the world jacket on. And you went and pushed her. I am gonna fucking hit you. Done. Titus Hardy. Everett personally sent me to take care of this. If this goes south, we'll all be in the shit. But you, Titus Hardy, are going to be buried. Am I understood? When she's angry, she emphasizes the S. It gives her voice a strangely hypnotic quality. Her lips barely move as she speaks. Frankly, it's a bit terrifying. Someone has to rush in to break the tension. The second in command. Look, Copper. We know that that fuck was a rapist and a killer. We got him confessing to it on tape. You am confessing to it on tape? Is that a forced confession, though, against his will that you made him that you made him do before you killed him? Show it to him, T. What's the harm, right? Here, jerkwad. Listen to this shit. And then come back and tell me the soldier of the apocalypse was an innocent man. Another apocalyptic actor in town? This is their last play, this tape. Their story is in tatters, a mess. It might be nice to listen to, but at this point, you don't need to. Why should I care about the tape? You lied to me. You don't care about evidence. The fuck are you a cop for then? Fix, T. They don't care about getting the truth. They care about getting convictions. They are fucking keeping a score on their bulletin boards. I won't be on your bulletin board. If you don't listen to the tape, we got nothing to talk about. There's a lot of questions. If you ask them now, they'll just keep bringing up the tape. Listen to it, and they'll have nothing to hide behind. So what's on this tape? What's on it? We call it the Dorgon Omega Mix. You'll know why. Won't you listen to it? Where did you get this tape? You think we go into this shit deaf and dumb? You RCM aren't the only ones who know how to bug people. There's no university degree for that. So you've bugged them? How? We have machines. We're in logistics. How do you think a harbor works? It's advanced stuff. Okay. Understood. You've listened in on their communications. How long? Since way before their chief started taking swing lessons. Things got nice and quiet after that. Which one of you is doing the advanced radio work then? It's not advanced. You just hold up in a coop all day, writing down what they say. It gets hot as hell in there. Don't put yourself down, Angus. It's important work. Yeah, man. They're like a radio genius or something. 
Those notes are some in-depth stuff. Indexes and shit. That's enough for now. I'll get back to the investigation. Don't forget your tape, lawman. Compliments of Titus Hardy. Take the tape. I'll listen to it. You do that. Oh, and keep it. Maybe you'll need a reminder of human ugliness someday. Okay. So there's a tape, apparently. I was ready to throw down. Let's go. <laughs> Door gunner mega mix. Hardy gave you a recording where the hangman supposedly testifies. Have a listen on the, a playback device, either in your room or find one from a pawn shop. Oh, we can listen to it in our room. Interesting. The intro. The the thing here though about this is like they've bugged them. Just because there may be a, a mention of something doesn't mean that something's actually taken place. But we'll have to see. Let's listen to this tape, shall we? Door Gunner Mega Mix, a magnetic tape acquired from Titus Hardly, uh, Hardy. It supposedly holds a recording of the Mercenary Task Force radio communications recorded via a de-encryption station. Not a good omen. Requires a boombox to play. The portal reel is just what you needed. We push. Command set. And the tape starts spinning. Violent static and machine sounds fill the air. This isn't Remishar. This is a fucking village. I can almost see the elephants. Huh? The harbor. That's the son of a Kvalsund crane. When this shit is done, I'm gonna tear that place up. Soldier of the Apocalypse style. Kill shit. Dogs and chickens too. Soldier of the Apocalypse style. Gonna run a room, Cordy. A real nice room. I don't give a shit. I'm fucking done. I'm done mentally. I'll fucking do them all in. Rape that disco cunt on the counter. You know. The dance a whore upstairs. Do it Kohoi style. Never did get that taste out of my mouth. The lieutenant presses the button marked Arete on your porter reel. The tape stops spinning. What was that at the very end? Silence? End of recording. What do you think? It seemed authentic enough. Probably recorded off the shortwave. Then edited to seem more incriminating. He sounded like he was on patrol around the harbor walls. I agree. He also said it inebriated. Still. The look of suspicion. It seemed authentic enough. And then Probably we go... The short way. He did say he's going to do it. You edit can't edit words into someone's mouth. Indeed, but... Who's this Corti? Corti could be short for Cortenar, one of the other mercenaries, the one he was talking to. Probably the mountain at the harbor gates. Mr. Right to Work. What's Cahoy? A village on the Samaran Isola, in South Safre. Grad committed war crimes there, the kind of thing he talks about. The South Safre conflict is an ongoing proxy war between Grad and Safre. It has been hot for 12 years, with the atrocities piling on, mostly committed by the Grad. You think he was there? Who knows? Maybe the tattoos would have an answer. We would need to know the story of this man's service. Uh -huh. A symbol of Soldier of the Apocalypse style conduct in a civil environment. Okay then, what now? I think we've got a few more questions for class here, don't you? This seems to contradict her testimony, at least to some degree. Mm. Okay. Let's go speak to... Oh, hang on. Behind the dock workers, a ceiling height window. The hawthorn branches scrape the glass like bony fingers. This is the window. It's a sight perception check. 97%. Note in the workshop. I guess, I guess this like instantly just bumps it up to like, yeah, you can do this now. Look out the window. There's a yellow ribbon tied to one of the branches. Light yellow. Faded with time. A tiny speck of color in the blackness of the thicket. Hanging from it. A bronze key. 
Someone hid the key in the bush and attached a yellow ribbon to make it easier to find. It's close enough to the latch up there. One can slide it open and just take it. Surely not a coincidence. Someone's hid a key in a bush. Huh? Huh. I need you guys to hand the key to me. Titus, can you hand the key to me, please? Can you let me slide by so I can grab this thing? Hmm. We could probably grab it at night. When they're not here. Should I ask him nicely? Titus, can you hand the key to me, please? I'm not your janitor, cop. I don't even know what you're talking about. There's nothing there. If he says it's there, it's there. Can you let me slide by so I can grab the thing? I don't know about that. I'm comfortable here. Don't think any sliding would really help right now. Sorry, fucko. Looks like you're gonna have to go bush diving. Good fucking luck with that. The Hawthorne's got a bitch of a bite. I'm gonna enjoy the sight of you in the bushes out there. With a loud thud, the old man stands up, pushes the window open, grabs the key from the Hawthorne branch, and slides it across the table to you. Oh wow. Okay. Theo. We haven't had we haven't gotten much out of I don't think we've gotten much, if anything, out of Theo this whole time, actually. So he's just he just comes up, grabs the key, slides it across the table for you. The key is brass. Workshop spear is etched into its bow. The old man closes the window and sits back down in silence. Come on, man. We were just having some fun. Where's the harm in? I'm tired of listening to your shit. <laughs> thank you. Don't thank me. I don't give two shits about your key. Does anyone know why this key was hanging right outside the union box window? Didn't even know it was there. Boys. Mm, no idea. Never even seen it. Someone must have hidden it there before this room became our place. I wonder what doors does it open? It's for the blue door in the kitchen. There was a note there that you missed. It said the workshop key is behind the window. It's this key. Nice. Well, now we can just straight up open the blue door too, if we want. Isn't that fun? Why are you not running? Thank you. You see, the key fits the dimple lock. It takes a bit of effort to turn it after all these years. But then the lock clicks. Nice. Now I can investigate this one. The pinball says, uh, Franco-Nigerian, the theme is horses and swords. Nice. Blue door is open, baby. The machine. I wonder if we can speak to the, the cook. Oh, hang on. Uh, there's a thought. All these mesmerizing machines just waiting to be plugged back in and played. Run your finger across the dust of the white Diora machine. Feels like it might jump back to life any moment. The lights illuminating the white-robed woman. What's white Diora? Some kind of inane pinball theme. <laughs> Probably related to Messina during the DeLorean age. The history themes are the worst. Diora was one of the three crown cities of the DeLorean era on the Muindi Isola. The others being Ria Silvia and at Vesperasket, this theme is all about early airships and beautiful, sad, pearl-laden women. It's quite nice, actually. The lieutenant grimaces, looking at the machines. What about the fire? What about we fire one of these... Sorry, I can't read. I'm mixing sentences. How about we fire one of these bad boys up and play some ball? You can't fire them up. They are broken. Only that one machine in the main hall works. The Royalist Pinball. What a dumb name. Royalist Pinball. If they weren't broken, he would kick one of these machines about now. An encyclopedia check. Very high. 97%. Think. Kim Kitsuragi. Kim Kitsuragi. Kim. Pinball. Kitsuragi. <laughs> A.K.A. Kimball? Exactly. That's what he's known as. His reputation precedes him. You're Kim Pinball Kitsuragi. So now he remembers. Oh. He looks at you in the silence of the workshop, then takes his glasses off and cleans them. 
Fine, I'm Kim Pinball Kitsuragi, aka the Kimball. You remembered. Congratulations. Interesting. That's cool. Wait, but I still can't remember anything else. Wonderful. He <laughs> only remembers hearing about the pinball policeman. You don't seem to really like pinball? No human being should. It is a game that requires no skill and a childlike affinity to flashing lights and to fantastic science fiction and historic romance franchise. It is lame. Then why are you called Pinball? I am not called Pinball. It was used to taunt me a long time ago, before I became a homicide detective and got my lieutenancy. How did you...? Fine. I was a juvenile police officer for over 15 years. It's how I started out in the RCM. Once I had to infiltrate a pinball ring, as you do when you are a juvie cop. Infiltrate a pinball ring. Okay. It was not okay. I needed to become a pinball champion. I trained for nine months. The job was successful and I was moved out of the juvenile wing to homicide. When you go from doing uh, going undercover for like pinball and having to train for nine months to then getting moved to homicide? End of story. You were a juvie cop for 15 years? That time is over now. I was already a 38-year-old man. It was unbecoming, as was playing pinball. So that's why he doesn't want to talk to Kuno. Trauma and stressor disorder from being a juvie cop. Wait, so that's why you didn't talk to Kuno? It's best if you handle the juvenile delinquents. Don't worry, I'll keep calling you Kim. Lieutenant Kitsuragi is good too. Now, we really need to continue our sweep of what appears to be a secret path through the whirling. Mate, <laughs> I was going to say Lieutenant Kitsuragi, but I was testing our friendship, and it's nice to know where we stand, Kim. On a last name basis. Oh! <laughs> My friendship is ruined. All right. We sung karaoke before it even hit 9 a.m. in the morning. Had a confrontation with Titus. I need some goddamn coffee or something in my system right now because goddamn it's been a big morning. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm very attractive. Great, thank you. Okay, man. Well, we got that one out of the way. Um, you know what? While we're here and we're still at the whirling, I we're gonna go actually interview Kostya because we should do that before we go too far away. Uh, so let me get my empathy clothes back on. <laughs> this game's so funny where it's like, hmm, let me put my empathetic clothing on before we get into this one. <laughs> my empathy boots. Um, my empathy glasses. Um, I'll keep our composure pants on. Um, I need to put a good jacket back on again. That isn't a nightmare. Let's do, let's, let's put, let's get our shivers going. Actually, no, this is my empathy jacket, isn't it? Yes, yes, my empathy jacket. It's exactly what I knew that we were doing, and I need a better shirt on that isn't going to be aggressive. <laughs> um... Minus one empathy. Well, I guess we'll just go for... Let's do logic, actually. There you go. The, the boots, though. Lovely. Alright. Let's head back upstairs. She's having a smoke. It's a new day, so I assume it's definitely been... It's been enough time, you know? I think we're... St yeah, we're still... Uh, enjoying the effects for ten more minutes about the cigarettes. So we've got some, some higher things going on there, at least. Now, I want to check this. I want to do something. I want to quickly check this medical cabinet. This medicine cabinet is stocked with drugs, plus an old toothbrush, and... Search for the preptide again. There it is. The orange sun okay. wearing blister pack. You feel almost nostalgic for it. So it is still there. So one thing that I wanted to check if it was still here, because we searched the bushes near the fisherman shacks last night when time had moved, and we found Preptide in the bushes. And I was like, I wonder if 
there would be a connection there, like it was thrown away or something. But there you go. We don't need it. We have more than any one man should have. <laughs> No, we we don't need we don't need to steal it from a medicine cabinet, but it is there. All right, outside we go. Let's finish this. Let's finish this interview. Let's get this story straight. Let's figure out who's who's telling the truth and what actually means what. Hello, officer. What brings you up here again? Okay, let's have a look. Let's talk more about this so-called assault. Not my favorite topic, but okay. Now, are you are you sure? Well, this was a question that we didn't go into because I believed her. So I was like, you know, asking the question, are you sure you weren't seemed very uh, dismissive and sort of, you know, uh, what's the word that I'm thinking of? I uh, can't think of the word. <laughs> um... But yeah, kind of, it just didn't seem like a good idea. But I'm going to ask it now, considering what that we have more angles on this story. I'm 89% sure. 89% sure, okay. So you're 11% not sure. You know how it is. Okay. Do you? Do I? Hmm. Maybe you don't. In conclusion, officer... I'm going to go with a mild to medium not raped here. It sounds like something happened and you don't want to acknowledge it. Let me make this 100% clear then, officer. I was not sexually assaulted. Would I be as flippant if I had been? Thank you. Okay. How about we, you know, change the subject to something more lighthearted now? I hate to disappoint you, but we are not going to do that, because I have to now talk about the recording. She puts her coffee cup down. With a soft ring, as the porcelain meets the metal table. This does not surprise her. Did he? I never said he was a good man. Or that he had good intentions. Only that he was never bad to me. She doesn't care. If anything, she sounds amused. On this tape, he specifically identifies you as the target. Mm, where did they get this recording, exactly? It's intercepted radio chatter of the deceased, recorded via a de-encryption station. It's authentic enough. Does he say he's gonna do it <coughs> Soldier of the Apocalypse style? Those are the exact words he used. Yeah. That was practically his pickup line. Did he say whores a lot? Was he pretty much on the verge of doing it co holly style? Oh, and now that I've asked that question, I can actually say... Say it in that way. Yes, the word whore was used. He liked the way it sounded when he said it. As to co hoy he wasn't actually there. He didn't do a tour, or at least didn't tell me he did. Would have been overkill anyway. He lived his own little cohoy. It wasn't his everything. So it makes me feel like what could potentially be happening here is... You know, we know that Cloche has slept with the other Hardy Boys. Uh, don't know how many, but we know that Titus is obviously one of them. Uh, they've intercepted radio chatter about him talking, they would seemingly and obviously become aware that Classe and um, the mercenary were sleeping together because they're all sort of in the same vicinity. They would see them drinking together, flirting, whatever. So intercepting that radio chatter, it seems that they may have potentially taken that recording as like what's actually happened with them, you know, sleeping together. And then they've acted upon that. But then, with that being said, Class J has, always, has already said, they asked me to spice it up as well. So, you know, it's a, this is a tough one. We have conflict, many conflicting statements. Why say things like that? Machismo? Want to be macho man or machismo? Yes, w was he bragging? Oh no, I'm pretty sure he did all those things. Then integrated them into his idea of normalcy. To keep on living. Until they just sort of turn into his, uh, 
She's quite oh, observant I about the clicked. human character. Trained to observe, even. Turned quiet for ages. My brain just clicked. So, so I interrupted her. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, persona, catchphrase, coping mechanism. Did you learn this from studying RNG's lit? Sounds psychological. People who go to university know how to use words like internalize and integrate, officer. Now, what was that expression? There's more to this. She has an index in her head of pathologies and how to exploit them. I can almost see her turn the pages. You can trust Pillar Bookhead, by the way. As far as I can tell, he's not singing to her tune. The only one besides me. Coping mechanism? Running joke. I was gonna say running joke. And it sounds like you didn't even get the good bits. Lely's punchlines got way, way funkier than that. It was like the Semenese conflict, the Kohoi massacre, and the 36 famine in Yezut all rolled into one person, then cast in Orani ceramic armor, which he wore in bed and in the shower. He was just always in that armor. When he said he was done, and done mentally, it didn't sound like a joke. It sounded like a deeply troubled man. Hold on, he said he was mentally done. That sounds like a broken man to me. Well, maybe I pieced him back together with my magical personality. Aren't you afraid? Afraid of what? That tape the Hardy Boys recorded? Your mother probably never told you this, but... Girls are evil. Had I the physical robustness and social support, I'd be in Kohoi. I would be tearing it up soldier of the apocalypse style. She wouldn't. She doesn't have the full hoy in her. Did he tell you he had actually done any of those things? He and Martinez, I mean? No. We were too busy laying waste to our own nervous systems to direct any of the fury outward. He seemed... He seemed happy, I guess. At ease. As much as a man like him could be. What kind of man was he? Before you go, ask for details. She seems okay to talk about it. Thank you for clearing that up, miss. Whenever you're ready. I'm interested to hear what Titus Hardy has to say now. She takes a very small sip of her coffee and smiles. Now that you've had some time, can you tell us more about the victim? Like, for example, his name? Actually, officer, I didn't know his name. I just called him Lely. A nickname? I guess. He came from Lely's dad. It's short for that. And it was his army name, apparently. He said his real name wasn't his. I tried to pry it out of him, but it was no use. Lely's dad. That's a good start. We have a few questions you can help us with. A few things a field autopsy alone can answer. The young woman cranes her neck, trying to catch a glimpse of the page the lieutenant passed to you. On it is a list of autopsy observations recorded neatly in blue ink. The last missing pieces of a puzzle of flesh. Okay. Where is Lelistad? The place, I mean. In Oranje, officer. It's, um, I think municipality is the term. A nowhere town there. The Leilstad municipality has few boroughs and even fewer cities. It's made of agricultural plots near the border of Gottwald. Executive summary. Cows, silos, and wheat. Aranje? Aranje's map of waterways? This fits with his tattoo. Mm -hmm. You are almost right, officer. That means his race was Occidental, not Mondial. I'll update the form. You were both from Orange? Yes. We were compatriots. Did that bring you together? No. He was too old for that. And from another part of Oranian Reik. I didn't even understand his accent. What brought us together was in Oranje. It was bad habits. No love for Mother Aranye, but wasn't he a soldier? This could be worth pursuing. A military man, but not a patriot? No. He left the National Service after they taught him to do what he did on Seminine. 
He wasn't the flag-waving kind. He was the making money, killing people kind. He was by no means a stupid man. A people person, a small platoon leader, certainly not a patriot. You don't seem like much of a patriot yourself. Mm-hmm. There is nothing on Moindi. The old, old world is dead, and we both knew it. Maybe Oranya did bring us together. In loathing. I love Ravishol, though. I hope she loves me, too. How old was he, miss? He was 42. Okay. 42? Are you sure? I would have had him above 50. He had many scars that made him appear older. But no. We even celebrated his birthday, like, some weeks ago. It was a funny two days. He had little reason to lie to me. Looks like you were right, officer. As though assigning some kind of point. Points are good. Have one, you old dog. Before we all die. I love that it's like, I did not know this was a competition, Kim, but it's also at the same time, like, there's the weird pissing contest, right? Between the precincts. Better not to mention it. The young woman looks at you, then the lieutenant, then you. She's clearly sensing something. A spike in <laughs> testosterone levels, perhaps. <laughs> His eye color? Blue. L light blue. They were like... Like little blue galaxies, you know? It was strange, seeing those eyes in his fucked up face. Pardon the swearing. I do him an injustice. He wasn't ugly. And he had a beautiful, soft voice. Very surprising, what with all the scarring. It was quite something, watching him speak. He had a combat wound on his chin and mouth? Yes. Severe. It made him look like half his face was cracking away in some strange smile. That and those eyes. Ah, oh, yes. His hair, if you can remember. It was light brown, almost blonde. He darkened it with brilliantine, made oily. Not nice to stroke. I couldn't convince him to leave it alone. Ah, oh, here we go. We can ask another about the tattoo. He had a tattoo. What did it mean? Oh, that. It was a map of his service history? Sure. Service history. It was mostly for showing off to chicks, though. For showing off to chicks? How so? How? So? how? <laughs> Imagine him lying in bed. Freakish musculature laid out on the sheets. Scarred, of course. Tattooed. The sheets are dirty for some reason. Is this Oranis lit? Don't interrupt. He's smoking and drinking, of course. And his chest and shoulders and arms are studded with stars. Tens, hundreds of them. Maybe even thousands. And the woman goes like, What was this, baby? And he says, That was too hardcore. Don't ask me about that. So she goes, Okay, but what's this, baby? And he's like, Saw some bad shit there. Killed some loincloths. And so it goes. Star after star. Port after port. Third world country after third world country. And he's done horrible things in every single one of them. You were the woman in this? Oh yeah. Can you tell us precisely what these mean? Hand her the photo. No thank you. I've seen enough of him dead. I can tell you what they meant without looking at them. Go on. He was a blue-eyed boy with thick arms, from a small town. He was also poor, and the government of Oranya needed some people killed, so they turned him into a grotesque killer. For money. He went to Killer Academy in Vredefort. Then he killed some people on the Seminine Islands. And on other islands, too. All of the islands. After this, he came to Ravishol and got killed himself. Not a very fun story. It is when you're high. <laughs> it can be very exciting then. 
you have the tools to deal with it. It's not a very nice story to remember when you're sober. A change of topic? Could it be love that did him in? It very well could be, yes. What do you mean? What do I mean? I have no idea. I don't even know what you mean. Love did him in? What does that mean? I love that we go into, he told me, love did him in. Is this when we were having a dream and we confronted him? Because, like, that was probably our own brain talking about how love did Harry in. <laughs> he told me, love did him in. That's not funny, officer. Her voice is like a slash through the air. Her shoulders tense up. Something miraculous is coming, he told me. The lieutenant blinks. His expression does not change. Yeah, these ones are interesting. I don't know why Harry feels so able to just be like, yeah, so about this dream. All right, let's see where this is going. Uh, oh, it's such a weird angle to pursue and kind of disrespectful. Um, however, Harry's in a mood today. From way out in the Northwest, he told me. Cool. Okay, never mind. It's <laughs> just nowhere. Uh, we ordered a toxicology report. Any idea what that will show us? A real rainbow splattering of pharmaceuticals, I bet. Barbiturates, amphetamine, sildenafil. How much does the toxicology report cost the police of Revachol? I can do it for half of that. <laughs> Save you some money, make some myself. It's quite expensive, miss. But we'll manage without your help for now. Okay, I think we're finished with this line of questioning. Hand the lieutenant back his notes. All right. All right. Coolly, gracefully, she pours herself more coffee. Uh, um, let's go in to see if there's anything new in here. Yeah. Oh yeah, I can talk about the door now. That door there. Did you know it leads to a downstairs elevator? I did not. <laughs> Mystery solved then. I kept wondering where it led. There may be more to this mystery at some later time. She's holding back. Let's make a mental note for now. There were tracks on the floor. They're recent. Huh. This isn't good. She's straight as a stick, suddenly. She feels like quarry, encircled. Her eyes dart to the door. It's an old pinball workshop, the room back there. This place used to be a pinball arcade. Okay. I'm glad someone's had fun. That's all for now. Mm-hmm. She's lost in thought. Eyes narrowed. Forehead furrowed. Shall I also pursue the line of questioning of, hey, you got drugs. It just doesn't feel all right. entirely relevant. Yes. You're just one room away. Very personal. I mean, actually, Kim's is... Well, I mean, we're below her, but Kim's is next to her. Good. Yes. This means she could have heard something. Like what you were doing before you blacked out. Were you in Sunday night? I need to know what I did before I lost my memory. You do not need to know that. What you need is to ask normal police questions. Like... <laughs> Quick, say something professional. New task. Uh, maybe we need to wait for Kim to not be with us now, because I've got none of this here. Wait, stop. That man, bloated beyond all recognition, was 42? That's what she said, yeah. Below the damage, the weeks of decomposition, all the swollen indignity of mortality. He was 42 years old. Where is this going? How old are you? <gasps> That's where this is going. 45,000 liters of raw alcohol has left its disfigurements. What lies beneath? You wonder. You could ask either one of them. I got this. Uh, I got this my age. Uh, I think I'm... Kim, how old do you think I am? Huh? How old do I look? How old? Hmm. 58. <laughs> Maybe you're wrong. You were wrong about the deceased too. He was way younger. What does it say in here? Do we have anything? We don't have... We've been in the we've been in service for eighteen years, and we're a Lieutenant W. Freighter. Kim was a, in was a junior 
for, let's do the detective for 15 years from 23 to 38. We don't know how long ago that was. He's definitely younger than we are. Maybe you're wrong. You're wrong about the deceased too. He was way younger. He was deceased. He had been decomposing for a week. <laughs> oh, I feel like I feel like I've been decomposing for longer than that. You're right. I'm probably 62. He pushes it up four years. <coughs> I feel like I've been decomposing for longer than that. On the bright side, you've been getting a lot of exercise lately. That is true. The ravages of Al Ghul are nearly as extreme as that of death itself, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. This silence. Actually, what what is that? Then, a little more. Here it comes. Mercy. Sure, you're 42. Let's go. Wait. This requires scientific measurements. The ravages of Al Ghul are nearly... I'm not sure what that statement was, but there you go. Bring it on. I'm not afraid of the truth. To the laboratorium. Oh no, date of birth generator. Oh no. Date of birth generator. Your face looks like it's 58 and your body feels like it's 60. Your mind feels like it's lived for one day or a hundred, both longer than they ought to be, the day and the century. But for how long then has this thing attached to your sentience walked the planet's crust? Time to start racking those brains of yours, Elder One. When and where were you born? I love the artwork for that one. That's great. <laughs> Seven hours. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so in terms of tasks... When Kim's not around, ask her about what she heard from the room. There you go. So we can we can do that. Nice. We only have one Tuesday task left. Can't do the signatures yet. Can't do the meeting yet. We can have the task to address the uh, Gaston's cheating. Um, we can call Jamrock Library soon after ten. I need to find another tape, one that preferably is not a uh, <laughs> you know, a recording of someone's, um, intention to assault someone, and maybe not a sad tune, maybe something else. We can go to the doomed, we can go to the doomed commercial district. That's something we can do. We can inform Placence and the Dice Maker about impending doom. This is a happy episode, isn't it? We're really just getting through some good stuff today. <laughs> super positive, super positive stuff today. Before we head to the commercial district, I actually need to talk to Titus again. It's you again. <laughs> what is it? I remember that we actually have to tell him what we've learned. So I talked to Klaus about the tape. And? And what do you think? He tenses immediately. Chest tightens. Jaw sets. Ready for another blow. Ready for another blow. And nothing. She stands by what she said. That fucking fucker. You're the worst cops in Revishal. I gave you gold on that tape. Okay. That fucker wasn't aimed at you. It was at her. Mm. You caught him off balance. Push and he will give way. Push and he will give way. Interesting. <clears throat> gold, it was just locker room talk. It's not evidence. It was dark stuff, but it didn't prove anything and it didn't change her mind. Yeah, it was bad. Honestly, I expected it to have more effect, and she pretty much laughed it off, Titus. Might just go for the last one, I think. She pretty much laughed it off, Titus. Fucking fuckity fucker. And what did she say then? That it's fine. People are supposed to be like that. It did not come as a surprise to her, and she definitely wasn't scared. I think it made her a little nostalgic. If anything, she seemed turned on by the whole door gunning thing. Titus, she said she would like to be a little door gunner herself if she could. Yes. In fact, I think she thought it was a little funny. Funny? No good goddamn psycho whore. Seems like they wanted to give Clasia a second chance to play along. She still didn't. Mm-hmm. All right. All fucking righty then. I 
guess it's good then. That fucking. We really, we've we've really gotten through to this one, haven't we? Please try to control <clears throat> yourself in the presence of visitors, Titus. This is just perfect, just fucking perfect. <clears throat> Any thoughts on this, lawmen? Women are crazy, irrational. That's what you're thinking, right? Also, your fists are itching for a bump. My fists are itching for a bump. I think you had a lie planned, but she didn't play along. I ask for your opinion. Not a bedtime story. Tell it to your grandma. This tape was the last chance for her to do what was planned. But she didn't. She knows she can't lie to us. Unlike you. Fantastic. So now, you remember how to do your job. I'm so sick of this piss. We should get something harder in here. Yeah, guys! We should get a party going tonight! Why? Uh... Maybe not then. <laughs> Success. They admitted to unlawful collaboration to derail the investigation. There you go. Maybe she isn't who you thought she was. Nah. I know her. She's just a girl. In over her head. She's a hardcore party girl with a bigger death wish than mine. Yeah. You're right about that. She takes way too many drugs. Well, it's as they say. You can't do anything with an underdose. <laughs> yeah. Underdose isn't an actual word. Yeah. But I mean, she has an actual drug problem. Not like you. Not like us. I don't think I've ever seen her sober. Be straight with me, Titus. What really happened? I already told you. We fucking hanged him. There's less gusto in his voice now. His men, too, are growing increasingly silent. Wearing him down, baby. The man is slowing down. Looks like a bad blood sugar crash. He can't keep track of all the variables anymore. Who could? It's getting harder and harder to perform one's part in this sordid play. All it takes is a nudge. Come on, Titus. We know you didn't hang him. He was shot. I know you're tired. So am I. Why don't you just... You know what? I am tired. I'm tired of you and the whore upstairs. Next time you see her, tell her. Titus said. Fuck off! He throws his beer can down. This is the petulant rage of someone who's at the end of their wits. That lion scamming. We're done. This is over. You understand? Your little investigation is over. Yeah. There's a silence in the room. Elaine starts saying something, then thinks best not to. What is this quiet funeral shit? All we need is some beers in us. Bartender! 20 beers for the dock workers union! <laughs> Why do we make it 40, huh? Why do we make it 100 beers? You're not loud enough! <laughs> 100 beers? Now we're talking. Hoppity hop over here, cafeteria manager! Oh nice, okay, here we go. There's a godly rhetoric check. Which... <sighs> game. <laughs> Which won't pop up on, on the top. Pops up <clears throat> below it. Look at all these plus ones. Rhetoric. Mentioned surreal play. Strange reaction to the bullet. Evrat. Compromised. So pushing him on the tape is a minus. So we almost had a complete by with all these pluses. This would be 97%, I guess. The minus one takes it down. Um... I can increase my rhetoric, so hold on. It's a white check. <coughs> so let me just change my clothing. Let me just clay change my clothing a bit. Because uh, I believe we have something that, uh, that increases our rhetoric, so we should be able to take that up to a 97. Do we? Yeah. Just the white polo shirt. Literally just the white the white polo shirt. What is it? What is it? 
92%. Okay. Convince Titus he is being manipulated. Convince Titus he's being manipulated. You should know by now. Titus Hardy will never falter. One of his boys will. Just remember, it's about more than Glazia. It's about these men and Martinez. Their district. Their responsibility. Outside, under the rising sun. Tattered and in ruins, the windows of the cafeteria aglow with her morning light. Okay. That's it then. Case closed. We're going home, Kim. Huh? The lieutenant raises his brow. He'll get it. Go on. Write it down, Kim. In Martinez, they just kill you because they don't like you. Got it. Kill you because they don't like you. All because... <clears throat> because of some chick. Because you work for the wrong people. Because they like killing. They kill you because they don't like you. All because of some chick. Bring that up one more time. And you won't get to write that report. A wince. It's involuntary. The man's fists under the table are bored. You can tell from his neck and shoulders. He means it. Yes, I understand, Alain. That's your name, right, Alain? You'll kill us. That's what they do in the Wild North. They just hang you, like in the Dark Ages, make a display of your corpse. They just hang you, shoot you, whatever. They can't even remember. They just hang you, shoot you, light you on fire. They don't care. <clears throat> I want to go for one of these, because this one also mentions the shooting thing. They just hang you, shoot you, whatever. They can't even remember. It wasn't that. It wasn't. We didn't shoot him. There you go. There you go. I, I wanted to mention the shooting. That's it. That's the weak one. You flushed him out. Now go in for the... Officer, you will be next if you don't shut up. The old man reaches for his belt, but his voice is strangely calm. Man's packing. Was Theo the one that put the bullet in? If he's, is he, if he's packing a gun right now? Firearm. A Glass 08 or a 38 caliber pistol. Either is small enough for you to have missed. Hey, a hand-eye coordination check. I'm wearing my hand-eye coordination jacket. Nice. He's onto you. <clears throat> he knows what you're trying to do. Turn to Angus. Or what? You're gonna f kill me like you killed him for no fucking reason? Or what happens if I keep talking? You're gonna kill me too in this bar for nothing? Look at Kim first. The option to look at Kim first. Oh, God, this is just such a tense interaction right now. What happens if I keep talking? You're gonna kill me too in this bar for nothing? It's kind of what I say, want to say to Theo, but we could also, I don't know if we need to mess with Theo right now, even though he's the one carrying the gun, we could turn to Angus because he's the weak one. I think Kim, Kim's been happy to observe my methods. I'm gonna turn to Angus. Or what? You're gonna kill me like you killed him? For no fucking reason? We didn't kill him! We didn't even hang him! He was dead when... <laughs> Sorry, what? There you go. Shut up, Angus! <laughs> oh, you fucking liars, man. He was dead before you hanged him? Fatty! Say one more thing to the cops and I'll... Dennis, stand down or I'll beat your head in. Theo, take your hand off the belt. This isn't 31. I've got this under control. Does he? His closed fist is shaking. It's you who's in control. Let them have their moment. <sighs> Where's your goddamn inhaler? You sound like you're dying. I left it home. I can't get it. I'm too fucked. I'm sorry. Why are you so fucking fat, Angus? Now it's all pointless. Because of you. You wasted my time. I told you, Titus. I told you just give her up. Just give her up. 
Lizzie, your help is no longer needed here. Go tell Everard. I told you to just give her up. This is our this is our mysterious other member. They're protecting someone. They're covering up someone else. Fine. I'll tell him. After a long walk along the coast. Wow. She walks off without looking back. She's out. You're in. He's all yours. Questions. Whisper, Kim, we did it. I kind of want to be like, Kim, we did it. The lieutenant gives a smile only you can see. Yeah, nice. Nice, all right. We made it. Gold mine. So you didn't kill him. He was already dead. He nods. You hanged the corpse to cover up the real cause of death. The bullet in his head. Another nod. Why? Because the girls asked us to. They were in some shit. The girls asked us to. Girls plural? There's another girl. Mm -hmm. Two of them. Take note of this. They'll probably say more about her later. Did she kill him? Cop, I have no idea. The girl says she didn't. He doesn't think she did. Or at least he hopes she didn't. The big question, what happened Sunday night? Class J came down. She seemed really out of it. Drugged up, even more than usual. Bug-eyed and gurning, you know? Not in a fun way. It looked like she'd redosed after something went down. I've seen that look before. She was scared. I knew someone had died. How did you know? I've done this job for ten years. I've seen it before. It's the politician in the motel room with the dead hooker scenario. Only in reverse. Good analogy, boss. <laughs> you don't get to talk yet, Chinky. You're still on the bench. And you keep taking it easy too, Angus. That's okay with the fat man. Still wheezing there. He couldn't speak if he wanted to. What happened then? We went upstairs. Sure as day the Merc was dead. And there was a bullet hole through the window. That uh, fucking... Dirty sheets and bottles everywhere. And that's why the window was replaced. Brand new window. Bullet hole through the window. Now, what's interesting is, this is Sunday night, and we need to, we were gonna ask when Kim's not around, Clashé, what we were doing on Sunday night. But I think it might have been a different Sunday night. Because <laughs> we arrived, uh, no, it had already been up for a, a week. I'm, I think I'm getting confused on the initial timeline now. Sunday night. The body's been there... The body had been there for a week from Monday, right? So... They're talking about... It's it's hard when they're talking about multiple Sundays. <laughs> I'm needing to put my timeline together. So there's the Sunday night of the murder, and then there's also Harry's Sunday night before the game started, I think. He means they'd been fucking. Oh, yeah. Tibbs patched the window. And the corpse. Behind. Tibbs. Who's Tibbs? The eighth hardy? Nah, he's my brother. He's in the window replacement business. Right now, he's grateful he hasn't gotten his brother into this mess. If Clashé didn't kill him, why the cover-up? You may have noticed our girls in some shit of her own. I didn't notice anything. What kind of shit are we talking about? The can't show up on police radar kind. There are people after her. From the old, old world. Where she came from. These people, who are they? They're powerful. Connected to the moral intern. She's clearly afraid for her life. Says if she showed up in your systems, she'd be ghosted away. Ooh. That's all he knows. That's all she's told him. And that's why she keeps her passport and, and stuff on the coast. In case she needs to make a quick getaway. And why would you help someone like that? By taking on a murder? Why would I? I guess we abide all sorts of runaways and losers here. It's a Martinez thing. So who killed the Merc then? Any leads? Not yet. 
Just some ideas. She says the shot came from outside, behind the window somewhere. So that's a clue. Oh, okay. So, like, so, like, pretty much like some sort of assassination. Someone's eyeing it up. So we need to think about who's got a, who has a visual of the window. Uh, my instant thought would be somewhere in the commercial, the doomed commercial district, right? Would have a shot at that window because of the angle of it. The dice maker's room has a view of the the hanging and stuff, I believe. But I don't know if it connects with. I don't know if it connects with um, the apartment or anything or the room. What were you, what are you thinking? I'm thinking someone's past caught up with them, either hers or his. That's another thing that could be even more interesting if, like, the intention for the bullet might have not even been for him, but for her, and it's hit him, and then it's going to spew all this other stuff out and these other complications, because if she's in trouble, that's also a logical train of thought. Hers, you mean? I mean the people after Klausia. Maybe the shot missed. Maybe it was meant for her. Mm. I like that. Been thinking the same thing myself. And you had ideas about his past, too? My dude. One of those mercenary buddies of his could have done it. They got guns. Training. Years of bad blood, probably. Or it could have been someone else from Cronell. Tell you what I'd do. Check out the coast for vantage points. Maybe consult with a ballistics buddy of mine. That's what I'd do. If I wasn't too busy doing this clown dance with you. Well, that's because you're the one playing with me, my man. Whose idea was it to hang him anyway? Hers? In a manner of speaking. Huh. Remember the two girls? He may be talking about the other one. Yeah. Earlier you said the girls asked for your help. Was this the other girl? That's right. It was her idea to hang him. I liked it. For political reasons. Mm -hmm. It sent a good message. It's her, isn't it? The drug trafficker. The missing eighth hardy. Fella, you think too much. He's off all right. You're gonna hurt your head. Yep, the lady driver. The drug trafficker. The missing eighth hardy. That woman is just affiliated with the hardy boys. You don't know her, anyway. You know, it's okay for there to be a hardy girl, Titus. We're hardy boys, and that's it. Okay, sure, but can you tell me anything about this affiliate name, current location? Nope. You're not getting to her. It's Klausia you want to talk to. Mm. Thank you for this, Titus. I'll go talk to her for the last time. Conclude. You do that. Hey, cop. Before you go. Suddenly, the wind picks up outside. You hear it rattling the large windows in their frames. It carries newspapers, circles the whirling in rags in a warm column. She, Klausia, came to Martinez to hide. Many of us did. This is where you wash up when there's nowhere left to go. The Union takes you in. Now, she refused that protection, but but you would still prefer it if we didn't take her away. That's right. If we didn't take care of the people who end up here, this place would just be a couple of ruins and some cargo containers. We'll take that into account. Wow, okay. There you go. You got the full story. Lizzie's out of here. She's gone. We finally got that semblance of a full story so shot and killed in the in the bedroom shot killed in the bedroom and then taken outside to be hung what an interesting storyline this window is pristine on the inside yeah hmm
Well, this has been a this has been a big day. It's ten thirty in the morning. <laughs> it's ten ten thirty in the morning. It's been a big day. It's always good to see you. She cracks a weary smile, leaning back against the railing. Something in her demeanor has changed. She's tired, consigned to her fate, to being here with you and what's to come. The Hardy Boys told us what really happened. I understand. Just like that. No resistance. Her shoulders are slouched, her feet long and straight. I definitely did believe what she was saying in the beginning. So it's like, not only did she not play along with the Hardy Boys, making them frustrated, but she had her own story, which didn't line up. And then both of their stories and both of, you know, what they've decided to do uh, have fallen apart. <laughs> you don't look surprised. You're expecting this. I knew there was a chance you'd get them to tell you. It's what you do. You're the police. For what it's worth, I'm sorry for wasting your time. This is good. Clear the air first, between you two. Then move on to questions. No, it's not good. It's the opposite of that. This will let her dictate the terms of your... Shush, I can't hear what she's saying. <laughs> let the miss speak. She's tall and thin and tired. A twig trying so hard not to break. If you knew we would find out eventually, why did you waste our time? Because of the Hardys. I couldn't just dispense with them. They were only trying to help me. Out of the shit I'd gotten into. It's not a good enough reason. You're right. There's more. More? You answer to the coalition government. And, by extension, the moral intern. Briefly glancing over her shoulder to the sea, as she's done time and time again. Where the cold oceanic expanse lies, and behind it, another world. Is that why you're looking over your shoulder? You're afraid of the moral intern? You share a database with them. You send people to their courts. What's going on? What did you do? Just business. But bad business for some people in the moral intern. If I show up in your records, officer, they will find me. They will... What happens if they do? They will kill me, sir. If you file my name, take me in for questioning, enter me into the moral intern mill. Well, then I'm fucked. For nothing. This murder didn't have anything to do with me. Actually, this murder did have a little to do with her. Mm. What did you do to have these people after you? It's not nice, but it's not illegal. Not here in Ravishol. Or even in Orania. What exactly did you do? Yeah, we keep asking this question. Industrial espionage. I joined a business collective with the intention of betraying them. I did my job well enough to be asked to do it again. With a bigger company. The kind you really, really don't fuck with. I took their ledgers. Two decades worth of accounting. I need the names of the companies involved and who hired you. Damn. The job was loose to in County Savings Bank. They sound small, but they're part of the Lou Scott conglomerate. That was the second job. The first was some printer company. You wouldn't know them printer company but she really destroyed them she still feels it as to who hired me for the job i don't know but they're after me too along with lou scop and their friends in the mi <sighs> once you're done in the competitive intelligence circuit you don't have allies you're radioactive Lowe's cap these people engineer financial disasters in second world countries the conglomerate also includes the Bank of Consecration, Airberg, and the popular Papalolo line of dairy products. <clears throat> mm. I'm sure there are people who have done much worse than that. Sure. I'm not a war criminal, but it was bad. People lost their jobs. Good people, too, not just C-suite. 
a lot of people got hurt. But that's just more of my shit you shouldn't have to deal with. You're solving a murder. That can wait. Look into her eyes. There's more. What did you do? I... One of them killed themselves because of me. She says it quickly, like she said it a hundred times to herself to get used to the idea. Mm. Out of guilt. That's... Not easy to deal with. How do you deal with anything? It's all just... How do you do it? By not remembering a single goddamn thing. I drink, I'm a cop, what I do is right. I don't either. There you have it. <clears throat> the way of the warrior. What happened here, the night he died? We were there. Together. In bed, I mean. Tell me exactly what happened. Okay. He was in a kneeling position. He had just entered me. I was on my back, looking at him. I heard the window behind me shatter, and I turned to look. There was a hole in the glass. Damn, so I think the bullet was definitely meant for him. I turned back to him. His eyes were looking through me, and his mouth was open. Dumb. I could see. I could. Oh, man, because... Okay, what's really interesting about this is... With the way that it went with the with the bullet, you'd think that you would see an entry wound... Wait a minute. Oh! Hang on. The window behind you, Shatter. But if, like, if they were both facing away from the window, wouldn't we, wouldn't there have been a, because the bullet was lodged in his brain. The bullet was like, we went through the mouth to find it. Wouldn't we have seen a wound on the back of the head during the field autopsy? Her chest rises and falls with each word. She keeps herself together and says it. I knew he was dead before he fell down on top of me. Then what happened? He was heavy. I pushed him off and he fell to the floor. There. He only had his boots on. I bit the pillow, not to scream, then ran downstairs. And that's what Titus saw when she came down? I waited for the second shot to come. For me. I thought there would be one. It never came. I'm sorry this happened to you. So am I. She throws it away and immediately proceeds to light another one. What time was this? When did it happen? <coughs> it would help us if you could be as precise as possible. 11.30 to 12.15. I don't know the exact time. Around midnight. It's okay. Were you inebriated? Not as much as usual. He'd done a line, plus other things. I was drinking. Wait. Titus said she was gurning her jaw off much more than usual. Titus did say you looked pretty high. Oh, yeah. I did one of his lines, just to clear my head. Did you hear or see the shooter in the course of this? No. What did you do then? Nothing. I was trapped. I was stuck in my room downstairs. I got some clothes on and crawled back up, through the blinds. Blood was coming from his mouth. Not a lot. Just a little. See, because I'm wondering, because the doomed commercial district is right to the left here with a nice, probably a, a clean sight line. And underneath there in the bottom is where we went into that weapon thing and we found the gun that's the same type of gun. Our gun isn't the murder weapon because it doesn't work, but we're looking for a similar type of weapon. And that was found in the same place that I uh, am suspecting the shot coming from. He was still on the floor, slouched. I couldn't be there with him anymore, 
So I ran down and out of my room, into the hallway, down the stairs. I knew there would be people there. Run, woman. Run past them and out into the streets where it's dark and people move. To the lorries at the intersection, as far as you can. Why didn't you run away from here? As a matter of fact, why are you here now? I already ran. I ran from an entire isola. There is... I can't run any further. Not with these people. This is as far as it gets. It feels weird for this line of questioning when we get the full story to then have the question of, did you kill Lely? Because obviously that's a complete contradiction, if so. But, um... Yeah, I'm really curious about the whole bullet situation because I was like, oh, if maybe they were facing the window and and fucking... And he, you know, was fucking her and has his mouth open and then he gets shot and maybe, like, the bullet enters in the mouth into the brain there's no exit wound. That's what I'm thinking is a good way to have that bullet be absolutely hidden. But she mentions that, obviously, her back... She was faced away from the window, which means they both were have to have been facing away from the window. He gets shot from behind and then falls on top of her. So I feel like uh, it's a, a little strange there in the field autopsy that there wasn't like, hey, man's got a bullet hole in the back of his head. <laughs> but, you know. What happened after you ran downstairs? Sylvie was tending the bar. A lot of people were there. The Hardys were at the table in front of the stage. I think the union box was full. Ruby was there too. They were having such a good time. I sat down and they all welcomed me. I didn't even have to say anything. Ruby knew something was wrong. Ruby? Before we continue, who's Ruby? Ruby. You know, the leader. There we go. Class J has just given us, so Titus isn't talking about it, but Class J has just given us uh, the the female lorry driver's name then, right? Our mysterious Hardy girl. The leader of what? The Hardy Boys. Eh, I thought Hardy was the leader of the Hardy Boys. Well, nominally, yes. Ruby's the one they go to when things happen, like... Things they need taken care of. She's the organizer. Mm-hmm, okay. Would you say she is the eighth hardy boy? <laughs> Why not? Why not? Okay, let's go on. What then? Well, Ruby said let's talk upstairs. I showed her the room. I've known these people since December. They know my situation. But I can't leave a paper trail. Ruby was the first one I told. She said she'd take care of this. That's what she does, you know take care of things. I helped her get the body to the bathroom. We used a belt to pull him up under the shower to keep him upright. To produce lividity, matching a hanging? Yes. <coughs> we completely missed the tampering. Looks like you got there in time. Mm. What was this, 20 minutes after death? Oops. About 20, yes. Ruby explained it would make the blood... You know what it does. She looks at the ground, then raises her light brown eyes to meet yours. Then what did you do? Ruby went outside to talk to Titus and the boys. I was just looking at Lely in the bathroom. I had to put his clothes back on. His armor, too. It was tough, but I've seen him take it off and put it on many times. It took Ruby maybe half an hour to come back with Titus. I'd gotten him ready by then. They carried him out. I knew what they were going to do. Make it look like a hanging. Ruby said they would. What did you do while they were hanging him? Ruby said to wait here. She also said I wouldn't see her for a while. That we should lay low or something. Mm -hmm. So I did. This Ruby. Where is this Ruby now? I don't know. I haven't seen her since. Okay, I'm going to make Titus give it up then. We will need to take this question to the Hardy Boys. Again, we're going to bother Titus. Interesting. Why did this Ruby go through so much trouble? to hide something someone else did. Look into this later. When it happened, did you hear a gunshot? When he was shot? I may have. I don't know. I couldn't hear anything over the glass exploding. Did you kill Lely? Weird question to ask, but let's ask it. What? 
Why would I put myself through this insanity? Get myself cornered like this? There's a silence. He wouldn't have died if it weren't for me. I know that. But I would never hurt him. He was a serviceman. He must have had a gun lying around. Close to her hand. A military weapon using jacketed ammunition. Downstairs people have this crazy idea that you killed him. I didn't hear any of that. He must have had a weapon nearby. Did you use that? It's okay if you did it in self-defense. Why are we pushing um, that she's the killer? Interesting. Well, I mean, I guess that... You know what? You fucking know what? That does address my inconsistency with the with the wound in the back of the head. But then at the same time, oh man, it doesn't address the inconsistency at all because <laughs> what that would have to mean is if there was no wound on the back of the head with a bullet, it means Class J would have had to have shot the gun Maybe it's like, put the gun in his mouth and shot him. Um, while they were having sex. Or, and then broke the window to then simulate. But then the bullet came from a, the bullet came from an older rifle. The bullet didn't come from like, you know, a handgun or a pistol or something like that. So this line of questioning feels really odd because it's like while it could be likely that you could have put a gun in his mouth and pulled the trigger if it was a rifle similar to the one that we uh that we have a firearm that shoots 4.46 ammo i don't know well i mean maybe there's a maybe there's a gun that's not a rifle that Shoots. For, I'm not. I'm not big on gun knowledge, by the way, and I think that's probably pretty clear. I don't really know much about guns, <laughs> so um, I'm assuming a 4.46 bullet is a rifle-related bullet. You're not going to be able to put that or shoot that out of a, a handgun. I feel like I at least know that much. Like it, that's not a pistol bullet. You must have had a weapon nearby. Did you use that? Let's go for just the first one, because then we can start pulling it from, like, a fake gossip thing instead and go, downstairs people have this crazy idea that you killed him. I'm sad to hear that. They must have said it in some fit of frustration or under pressure. They couldn't have meant it. I've talked to them after it happened. No one <coughs> implicated me. She's getting scared now of you, the downstairs people. All of it. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't feel right pursuing this line of questioning, but I'm curious to cover all the bases in this, considering we've been lied to from by her before that she was covering up for stuff. And the more we keep digging, the more fucking batshit stuff starts coming out of the woodwork. You must have had a weapon nearby. Did you use that? No, I specifically asked him not to carry firearms when he was with me. Hmm. He only had his stupid armor. Okay. The bullet in his head, it was jacketed, military grade. Who else here has a military rifle? I don't know. His friends have rifles. Maybe those psychos did it. Coalition military have rifles. I'm not a munitions expert, and I did not shoot him. She might have been a tad disingenuous when she avoided talking about the bullet in his head before. You've lied to me about this bullet before. When I said he was shot, you said you're confused. I've said I'm sorry. What more do you want me to say? I did my best not to lie. It didn't always work. I guess we may as well just go with the, this one as well. It's okay if you did it in self-defense. I did not kill him to defend myself from rape. I told you before. That wasn't what happened. Okay. True, sire. Tis true. Thank you, drama. Yeah. Not a line of questioning that I felt was necessary, but uh, we've been in sort of a situation where it feels like we need to just dig a little further into some things. I'd like you to answer some other questions, miss. Like what? Could the people after you have killed him? 
That's the first thing that went through my head when I heard the glass break. And? I thought they'd found me. They've killed him to punish me. All last week, I've tried not to talk to anyone or be seen with anyone so they wouldn't be hurt. I've come to understand, however, this is paranoia. What happened didn't have anything to do with me. The thing is, maybe it did. We don't know. I keep getting more revelations about this the further we go along. Maybe it did. I just don't know. I don't know anything. We can't go after Loose Cap. Not yet. There are other, saner leads. I don't ask you to, Lieutenant. If there's one thing I know, it's that you'll get nothing from there. Why did you call the cops if you're hiding? Because I'm an idiot. <laughs> Which is an indicator of truth. Idiot. She's nothing of the sort. So you would have us believe, but you're not. You have to understand. The people around here. No one was making the call, and he kept rotting. And then they picked his clothes off, and that little fucker threw stones at him. Hmm. Her jaw is clenched. Her throat moves. It takes all her strength not to cave in and sob. Once. Just one time. He kept throwing stones at him for three days. I could hear the thud. Thud. So I called you. I hope with all my heart it's not the last thing I do in Ravishol. Fucking Kuno, man. She definitely called the cops. That was task complete. It could not have been a lie. That is impossible. Oh god. That was a lie too. Who made the call then? Uh. She did, of course. Oh my god. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> when was the window changed? Last week. Angus and Titus's brother, I think he's called Tibbs, took care of it. Nice, so that's a correlated story. You should have another look at that window after this. Reconstruct the scene. It's right there. In her bedroom? Inside? Yes. You see the glass sparkling out of the corner of your eye. That's right. I'm curious about it. I think we're done here for now. She nods silently. She doesn't even smoke. Just picks up the cold coffee and holds it in her hands. Um... The lieutenant glances at you, then at the door. He's thinking, are we done here? Or, or should we arrest her? She's a flight risk and she lied to you. She should be taken into custody. No, that won't be necessary. Just leave her alone. She's been through enough. She doesn't need this police brutality. This guy won't budge. You have to wake Multiface up forcefully if you want to continue pushing her. Oh. A drama check. Manipulating your skill set, clearly lied about the bullet, the love that did him in, lied about making the call, and discussed a secret route. 97%. In God's name, wake up. What are we pushing her on, though? I don't want to... I don't feel it necessary, or uh, I don't want to uh, arrest her, take her in, whatever. I, I feel that um, I agree with the, the drama choice there, that we can just kind of, like... Let that one go. I don't know if this goes into that. It's a white check. So what I'm going to do is just in case, um, just in case it doesn't do what I think it might do because it doesn't seem too clear, I'm going to make a save real quick. So let's have this thought break through. Cleaning out the rooms. What if you didn't lose your memory? What if something in Martinez came and stored it all away for you to slowly open one box at a time so you can choose which parts to keep? Keep almost none of it. Only the flowers on the windowsill. Only the distant sound of a radio. Lose all the actors, the dark shadows. Leave only the still lifes, the blissful distant wash of waves. If everybody knew, you never did. She'll be coming soon. That is all. She'll be coming soon. That is all. Plus one suggestion, wake up, which we're about to 
tell Classier to wake up. Plus one Inland Empire and a new life and plus one Rhetoric by the Seaside. Three pluses. Okay, nice. Uh, we're carrying a decent amount of um, skill points on us at the moment, so it could be a good idea for us to uh, learn some more. I'm so tempted to do the Litany of Contact mic, actually. I'll think more on that. Maybe rigorous self-critique. Some of the long ones. We'll, we'll see how we go. As you look back, you think. So love did do him in, after all. I was right. If it weren't for her, he would not have been there. The shot would not have connected with his soft palate. Looks like love did him in, after all. She's silent, holding on to her coffee mug. No vapor rises from it. It's cold. Remember this silence. The lady is dangerous. People suffer around her. It appears this one has not been entirely corrupted. This may help. This may help the others see. Say nothing. Let her answer. Yeah. I'd like to think he didn't love me. Or that it was chemically induced and not real. Why? Easier that way. Was it real? I don't know. There's a knot. The smallest of knots. Real as anything. Finish thought. Okay. Let us pursue this line of questioning. Officer, what brings you up here in the rain? In God's name, wake up. Who? What? Dear God, you've been lied to. She could have killed her lover and lied to everyone. She's not candid at all. She smoke and mirrors and willow wisps. The thing is, she's directly, she's the last one to see him alive. She's a direct suspect of a murder. She's the last one to see him alive. And the bullet, you know, he died via a bullet. But then, yeah, like, we have to, it, it's really hard because we kind of have to we, we kind of have to push it, but uh, but can't push it, so we'll have to see how we go. So she's all smoke and mirrors and will-o'-wisps. She probably didn't give you her real name either. Why would she? Arrest her immediately, before she further entangles you in her web of lies. <coughs> well, it might not be the real name. That's the thing. I don't know. I wonder if, like, it, it's it's really hard to be like, what... What has she been, you know, honest about? And what hasn't she? Take it easy. Start at the top. Choose at the bottom. It's how we've always done it. No rush. Choose at the bottom. It's how we've always done it. Usually I always go top to bottom when we go through the list of questions, but that's okay. See? And then the starting from the bottom is what if I told you you're under arrest? <laughs> Um, hmm. I want to start with, I want to start with particular, particular questions. Um, I want to start with some particular questions. Let's see. Um, what if we start with, you know, I think you didn't make that call to the station. I did. What is this? I called your desk or whatever it is. The numbers are all over town. Call 8102 for emergencies. Okay. There was an older woman on the other end. It sounded like she was smoking. She took my complaint. She coughed. Okay, that's true. I can believe that because that's what happened when we called. That is the mm -hmm. emergencies desk number. Okay. Oh, no, no, it wasn't. I think I'm mixing her up with the... Um... I'm mixing her up with the radio computer one. And then I'm blending Alice and also the other guy that we spoke to when we called. So no, we haven't spoken to that woman. But our encyclopedia has confirmed it for us. Anyone could know that, sire. By looking around and calling the desk. I don't believe a single word she says. I feel like drama is getting us in trouble right now. Which is accurate for its name. <laughs> what time did you make the call? Thursday night. It was late. Sometime after 12. It checks out. Okay. 
if, if, yeah, I don't know, this feels, um, this doesn't feel correct to me. Say nothing. She stands before you, holding her back very straight. Your real name isn't Clashe among you. I agree. You wouldn't give us your real name, not when people are after you. Okay. Her voice cracks suddenly like there's a garrote around her neck. There you go. So she hasn't given us her real name. It makes it really interesting in how we could have chosen or choose to pursue and go about this because we can, you know, be in a situation where it's like, ah, oh, you know what, let's, uh turn a blind eye to a little bit of this, but we, uh, and be like, look, you've gone through a lot. You have other reasons why you're hiding and all that kind of stuff. But then the struggle, which is ever, uh, prevalent here is she's basically one of the prime murder suspects as well. Cause she was the last one to see him alive. So you kind of have to pursue that line of thinking <laughs> and push it. Even if it feels like uncomfortable, I think. Okay, what? Okay, it's not. I knew it, except I didn't. I believed it. <laughs> Good. You can tell me the truth. You log your work every week. It's all transmitted to Coleman, sir. I couldn't just beg you not to enter my name. So I lied. Like I lied before. Like I did at LCSB. I have to lie all the time. I'm so tired of it. I think that the passport thing is true. Was the passport bullshit too? That passport you keep hidden? No. It's submerged in a plastic boy on the coast, in the reeds. It just... doesn't say Clausia Amandu. It says Anuk Meya Smith. Interesting. I wasn't expecting her to tell us her name on this question, because I was actually going to avoid it. I was going to be like, mm, okay, I don't want to enter her real name into the system it's like i do but i don't it's actually really this is i feel very conflicted on this matter because it's like there's that part of me that genuinely wants to believe that this person is going through those like very difficult things that they're like clearly on the run that whole situation seems very believable to me um that if we enter her name into the system it just means uh a lot of trouble that there's that part of me that's like i don't want to get that real name and I wasn't expecting to get it in this in this line. Uh, it's it's hard. Uh, like fucking being, being a detective is not easy. Falsified documents. Ooh, falsified documents. Yeah, that's a good idea. Passport and visa, given to me by my employer. I can't even use them. My employer probably leaked the name, Maya Smith, to hurt me. Mm. Why would they do that? I didn't show up to a rendezvous. <coughs> They don't take that lightly. I didn't show up because I was afraid they'd do something to me. The job was finished. I'm just a liability now. She fears an arrest right here and now. This has been an awful turn of events for her. Where is this boy? West of the boardwalk. In the reeds. On the coast there. I put it there when I first arrived. Haven't been there since. I'm not sure I could even find it now. Given to me by my employer, I can't even use them. Employer probably leaked my name. So, okay. Oh, this isn't the real name. No, that's good. Okay, so it doesn't say Class J M you. It says Anuk Maya Smith, which is the falsified documents, right? As Kim said, I got distracted by getting thrown off by the other name. So she hasn't told us her real it's name. Useless. Oh, we can accept the task. Okay. West of the boardwalk in the reeds. We have to check this boy out. Let's let's accept this task. The lieutenant makes a note of it. You're welcome to it. It's in the reeds northwest of here, past the broken sewage pipe, right near the water line. And this is the situation that I find myself in. Right? Tell me your real name. I'm wondering if there is a potential choice to be made here when we choose to log information or send it off in reports or what's happening. If we can choose the name that we attach to this suspect slash witness, if we can keep it as classier and just be like, <laughs> or go with falsified documents. 
Yeah, it's this. It's genuinely hard of when I want to go. Tell me your real name. I think, at the very least, I can think about it and come back to it later. I feel very conflicted on this this train of dialogue that I'm going to say enough, as I think we can come back to this. She nods, her back straight, ready for whatever is next. Because we can turn to Lieutenant and go, why have we not arrested her yet? Devil Woman, what if I told you under arrest? Let's change the subject for the time being. She slowly, slowly lights another cigarette and steadies her breath, as if in the presence of some tiger. You are. This is not the end of this. And then we can go, let's get back to those lies you told. I'm going to return to that later. I'm definitely going to return to that later. I feel very conflicted on the matter. We can at least talk to Titus about Ruby's location and inspecting Classier's boy with the fake documents. And that is what we're going to do next time. So thank you so much for joining me for today's episode of Disco Elysium where we got into uh, we got into a lot more than I was expecting to. I was not expecting to get a full story, the reveal of the the other uh, the eighth Hardy, all of that kind of stuff by pushing this line of questioning. But now that we find ourselves here, it makes a lot of sense that we did. Uh, and it's 11.30 in the morning. It's been a big day. Sung a sad karaoke tune and also got the truth out of a lot of people today, which was very satisfying. Thank you so much for joining me and watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time.